All right, what's up with the wheelhouse? I hope everybody's doing good. My name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading, and welcome to the wheelhouse. So if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and select all. And if you are a returning viewer, just hit that like button. Make me a comment if you like. Um, I just want to let you know we have the link to the Discord in the description of this video. You can click it. You can come on in for free. Um, if you do want the courses, the one-on-one -on -one mentoring and um, the Wheelhouse Wednesday group trainings, the Jedi chat area, and everything else that comes along with it, like my trade alerts, uh, it's 99 bucks a month. It is popping in there. It's starting to grow, and it's really fun. Good group of people. It would be with like-minded traders learning, and uh, a lot of these guys are starting to get really, really good. Um, I want to go over uh, Drone Powell's FOMC speech yesterday, uh, market reaction, uh, what my plan is for some of my HODL positions, which are taking a hit. Uh, during all this, what I think is going to happen, we're going to look at some indexes, we're going to go through um, uh, some, some stocks and uh, some cryptos, and we're going to look at um, some trade strategies, and uh, even though my HODL portfolio is down, my trading uh, portfolio, despite even how crazy it was yesterday, I traded through it. And I'll just show you the equity curve, and it's currently at like a 71% win rate. Um, a lot of them aren't huge, huge gains. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, but not a lot of losses. Um, the strategy works really well. I went over it last night in the Wheelhouse Wednesday group training, and um, works really well. So if you want to learn how to trade, and uh, be able to get your charts to go up and to the right and make money, jump in the Discord, uh, verify with your phone or uh, email, and then you are in, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so, Mr. J. Powell, uh, he raised the rates again, 0.75, and that's probably going to keep going like that uh, for a little while longer. Um, he said, uh, that the housing market, uh, needs to go through about a 20% correction. What that means is 25 to 30% probably. Uh, it's already about 10%, uh, that it's come down across the country. Um, again, that's why I had sold my house. I kind of knew that was coming. Uh, but here's a little bit of good news. If the housing market does come by, come down and they get a little bit more price stability, that means rents will come down, and that means core inflation will come down. And that is why they want that to come down, also for price stability. Okay, um, That's going to be bad for homeowners, uh, you know, but with a long time horizon, a home is always really good, Okay, so don't stress. And it's going to be great for investors to pick up all kinds of deals which is my plan. Uh, that's why I moved and I'm just kind of waiting it out, wait for the real estate market to do its thing and then I wanna come and snap up a whole bunch of homes uh, near the bottom just like I wanna buy a bunch of stocks and crypto at the bottom too. So, what else did he say? Um, he says that the terminal rates, um, he thinks by the end of 2023 it'll be 4.6. Terminal rate is basically like the roof, like a threshold. Uh, before he, you know, before they they break something and they can start to uh, become more dovish, and uh, Wall Street was thinking 4.2, so he's a little bit more hawkish than Wall Street's estimates on that. So Wall Street thought 4.2, he's thinking 4.6. Okay, uh, he's obviously worried about inflation um, going up more. Uh, he does know it can get out of control. And, um, you know, he's just now for the first time, well, the second time, sorry. The first time he was honest was when he came out and said inflation is not transitory. The second time was uh, when he had his speech the other day. And he, he just, instead of doing, you know, signals to Wall Street, he basically just said straight up, we're in for some pain. Real estate needs to come down. 
We're looking at about a four-year recession, and he doesn't know what's going to happen past 2023, um, doesn't really know what's going to happen in 2024, but he does think that 2022 and 2023 are going to be tough. Um, yeah, inflation is entrenched, and they will get it down. It's just going to take time. That's why I've been saying that over and over. Um, let's see. The Fed uh, thinks that we are going to be at 0.2%. Um, lower on GDP in 2022, and he thinks that we're going to have growth below trend for the next four years. So what that means, basically, is he's saying that he's predicting slowing growth and a recession for about four years, which is about right. That's about right. It takes, and, and it won't be, it, it'll take you a while to come down and bottom, and we're already a year into that, okay? And then it'll take a while to come back to get back to even, like on the indexes and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, we probably have a good a good amount of pain ahead of us before we can really kind of grab into the, those, those real bottoms. And even though a lot of things look like they're bottoming now, every single time that the charts make patterns or get ready for a breakout, uh, you know, the Fed or the FUD on media comes and finds a way to tear down the charts. Um, again, they don't want the stock market and crypto market to rally because when people make money, they spend money. And money times the velocity of spending, like going out and buying things, demand, uh, creates inflation. So yeah, they, they really wanna keep the stock market down and you know they, they gotta get the real estate market down. And um, I watched the, the Senate hearings with the banks as well, and they're also saying a lot of things that, that I had foreseen and had been talking about. Um, they're, they're talking about you know um, cracks and stress on um, their banks and how they will have to pull out some of their investments and in liquidity in the market if there is um, you know a default start to start to increase and um, they also get less business because the interest rates are going up at such a fast sequence. So, yeah, I mean, again, this is just how it works. That's how I was able to kind of tell you all these things that he's coming out saying beforehand. And it's just because historically, this is the, the sequence that it goes in, you know. Um, you know, the credit markets are, people are going to, right now, people are using credit cards a lot, but there's going to be defaults there. Eventually, it ends up where... Real estate is down and it resets kind of and, um, you know, the, there's a lot of layoffs and there will be bankruptcies and foreclosures and then there will be easing and stimulus. And, and when that happens, most people are out of the stock market. They're scared to death. They're working two jobs. And, and then the Dow will lead you out and it'll start with, you know, first, uh, not doing such high rate hikes, you know, starting to lower them, maybe to 0.5, then 0.25, and then talks of, you know, we're at a level that we like, and then talks of program stimulating type programs uh, to stimulate the job market. I believe that's where they'll start. Um, and eventually they'll get to, um, you know, money printing again. It just goes round and round, and it's just like, just take, takes time, you know, from entry to exit. So, uh, yeah, he's looking at a four-year recession. That sounds about right. Um, the unemployment rate, he, uh, they finally came out and told you the truth of what I've been trying to tell you now for, for months. Um, they said they need to see job openings and quits come into balance. Um, expect a lot of layoffs, which we've been talking about on this channel. Very normal in recessions. Uh, he's looking for a minimum of 2 million job layoffs. Um, again, that's a way to control demand, although they will have to spend money on the programs for unemployment. Um, but at least they can monitor a little bit better the spending because they only give so much in those programs, I think. Um, I don't know if 2 million uh, layoffs will be enough. Um, they also talked about how the data wasn't accurate. Remember I was saying when Biden came out and he was all excited, oh, we got 372,000 new jobs. And I got on YouTube and I was like, bullshit. 315,000 of those jobs were second jobs because inflation, food, and gas were so expensive, people are getting second jobs. But he was bragging about how it's 372,000 new jobs. 
Well, Jerome Powell came out and basically confirmed that. Also, congressman came out and was like, you're not at full employment. You have 11 million job openings. So basically all the things I've been telling you, like, you know, that were true, he finally came out and told the truth. It was actually funny, too, because on Bloomberg, one of the um, one of the ladies on Bloomberg kind of messed up this morning. And she said something like, I can't remember verbatim, but she said something like, uh, well, now that Jay Powell told the truth, so obviously they do know, because I was like, are they, do they know? Or are they, like, they've been doing this for so long. How could they not know how it works? Well, they do know. They're just being reporters, and they're asking people's opinions. But she slipped up and basically was like, now that Jay Powell's telling the truth, um, you know, how is the market going to respond? You know, she was talking to somebody. But, yeah, he did come out and, and say, um, you know, what's what, the real and um, markets, you know, went through a, definitely a bout of volatility. The most I've seen uh, on any of those days ever. I was trading the Bitcoin chart, and uh, it was quite um, quite erratic. I think one candle went up a thousand and came back down, and went down a thousand. I mean, within like you know, like two minutes, it was it was pretty crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, that's like surfing Waimea. <laughs> Dangerous. Uh, I did good. I did pretty good in it, but to be honest, uh, I'll, I'll show you the, um, the the equity curve again. Okay, so you know, inflation is not the only problem. Um, you know, you know, he's gonna. He wants you to know um, that he, you know, expect him to be more hawkish, and I believe the term he used is restrictive behavior. Um, he is shooting for a 5.4 inflation by year's end of 2022. Let me tell you right now, that's bullshit. That's not going to happen. You've never, you, you never have gone down more than 2% in one year without a recession. So get it in your head that we're, we're already in a recession and that's going to go for a long time. Get it out of your head of soft landing. That's not happening. It's a crash landing. It's going to be bad. Um, and, and get, you know, yes. They're doing the best they can, but if they would have just started doing doing quarter point raises like a year prior, uh, they wouldn't have to be doing these emergency actions of such high, um, you know, high Fed rate hikes, you know, in sequence. They they could have actually like done it more soft. You know, the inflation is entrenched and it's a lot higher, um, even though the numbers they give you. Basically, it's double, and they know that, and so they're, you know, <laughs> they don't want to end up like uh, Argentina, who has a 95% inflation rate and just had to raise their interest rates 550 basis points in one hit, 5.5%. Yeah, they don't want to be like Venezuela and um, Argentina. I'm not saying we're anywhere near that, but look, it's going to be a recession. We have inflation. It is entrenched. We're going to be dealing with this this restrictive behavior and hawkish fed for a while. Um, I was a little surprised. I thought that he would do 0.75 and the market would rally because of consensus because it wasn't 100 basis points. But I was always a little worried about the press conference with, um, you know, all the reporters asking questions because they, you know, sometimes, most times they, they ask, you know, really good questions and he has to answer it and then he talks and talks and talks and that's when the markets get really rattled. So, yeah, shooting for 5.4 inflation in the next three months and we're at 8.1, it's not going to happen. I don't even know why he said that. That's like ridiculous. Um, stock market is going to feel more pain. I'm going to go over how I will be dealing with that. And I already, start, I already put a plan together. I already started on the plan today. Um, let's see. What else did he said, say? He says... Uh, he said that uh, 2022 and 2023 is going to be rough, and he has no idea what to expect in 2024. I, I think that that's probably fair uh, in a way because, you know, everything is data-driven, and, you know, we, we're taking steps, and we have to see, you know, how how what the reaction to the steps are. Like I had said before, you, you don't see CPI or inflation coming down until a minimum, minimum six months from the time you start tightening. So they started tightening in March. The minimum was six months was September, where we're at. 
It doesn't mean that it's going to start ticking down in September. It's a minimum of six months. It could start much later, okay? And behind that, we're going to have those decelerating earnings, which I'm is definitely going to be a problem for the stock market. Trust me on that one. Uh, you know, markets are all about their earnings and fundamentals. And, you know, when you when you have, you know, a double-edged sword, you have gluttony and over-ordering at a high price on materials and inventory, plus the exorbitant shipping fees, and then delay and back orders, and then all of a sudden it loosens up. And when it loosens up, you have a competitive marketplace. So now you have to offload those materials at break even or at a loss. The only way to offset that balance sheet is to really cut, well, there's several ways, but the first way you usually would do it would be to cut payroll. So there's going to be layoffs. That is going to slow down the buyer demand, consumer demand. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword with that. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to probably show up in those earnings. And I, like I said, I, I'm assuming that the earnings deceleration is really going to be starting... Um, I don't know if it's going to be this coming quarter or if it's going to start like the first and second quarters of 2023. Uh, we're already seeing some issues on earnings, but we're still holding up on a lot of them. So typically you get the stock market goes down, then the real estate, then a lot of the spending on the credit, which is where we're at now. Um, and then the banks start complaining, which is all where we're at now. And then, um... And then comes the decelerating earnings. Yeah, so so that's you know up the road, just a, you know probably coming soon to a theater near you, basically. Uh, let's see what else. Um, Biden did speak at the United Nations. Um, you know he addressed issues of you know renewable energy and food supply issues. Um, you know they talked about crushing. Um, you know, the wealthy and what that basically means is they're going to crush the real estate market. <laughs> I think that's what they mean when I was reading between the lines. Um, let's see. Yeah. So that, that's basically what's going on now. The market took a serious, serious hit yesterday. It was up. I was up a lot in my HODL portfolio. Um, it was a pr pretty big green day for me. Uh, it rallied pretty it was good before he spoke. It got really good after. And then all those gains got taken and I ended up in the red pretty deep. I unpacked everything he said. I went through it like three times. And um, I just decided that like even though I have very good companies and it's a HODL portfolio, it might be best to just let myself get stopped on the nine EMA on all my greens, okay? So I've already been stopped in the profit on ChargePoint, Lucid, Tesla went today. Um, I think there was like a couple other ones, all in the profit. My reds, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double, triple, quadruple, or even 5X down into momentum on things that are down like two, three, four percent the small ones, not anything that's really red, just to get out because the goal is to move the cash to the side. Essentially, what I'm going to do is have the same portfolio, but I'm just going to move it from the daily back to the hourly and swing trade it and then day trade, um, you know, because, again, the time frame has to do with the market volatility. And, you know, I'd rather, you know, wait for this thing to maybe double bottom or make a leg lower, let the bottoms reprocess there and then put that money back in. So I have not taken one penny loss other than paper loss, but I have not taken one penny loss. Um, and I don't intend to, I have strategies to get out of these kind of problems. And, uh, I just don't want to let these problems turn into big problems. And right now they're, they're manageable for me. Um, my trading, I'm really good at it. So I don't, I'm not worried about the trading, the swing trading. You have a lot more control because of the shorter time frame, and that you can, you can move with the volatility and the oscillations of the market, but the hodl. A lot can go down on the daily. A lot can change uh, working the daily. And it's best to be on the daily or the weekly if you're going to be investing in a bull run. And I'll kind of walk you through a couple little tips on that. So let's see. Um, last night I had the Wheelhouse Wednesday and I went through, um, you know, strategies and exactly how I'm doing specific things. Now, if you come in my Discord, not only do I teach you how to trade and 
talk to you all day and um, you have the courses, the one-on-one, you have the trade alerts, which I go ham on. I go ham on those trade alerts. I mean, you're very in the know on what's going on. I am, I got so many things going on for watch lists. I know what's happening everywhere all the time. All the time, I'm, I know what's going on. Every sector, every industry group, I'm very, very aware and conscious of it. And I'm making alerts in real time that goes right to your phone. As soon as I hit enter, boom, it shows up on your phone or your computer, however you set your notifications. So that's very, very good for 99 bucks. Now, so let's go take a look at the indexes. It's really good to understand where you're at at all times. Um, okay, this is where we had the pivot. We went up on a nice rally. It hit the descending. Um, let's just close this so we can see a little bit better. It hit the descending pattern and the pivot previous pivot high. I had drawn in these pivot lows. We actually broke through this one, broke through this one, pivoted up, and then some the CPI data came out. Of course, a rejection right at a pivot low. It's like magic, I swear. Every single time something is about to rally or break out, they come out and they bring it back down. So I, I have just, you know, I've just come to the realization that the stock market and crypto market will not and cannot go up unless the Fed wants it to. So that's why I'm just going to trade um, because my money is a lot safer trading than um, investing. Although as long as you don't have margin and you have really good companies that are fundamentally driven, um, you're really on not, not a lot of risk. You just have a lot of time ahead of you that you have to watch it go down. And there will be rallies to the upside. There will be rallies to the downside, but most likely um, the rallies will be longer to the downside. Now, we broke this one. We rallied. We hit our head on this. We came down, broke it again. And now we're at the last pivot low before we get to the June bottom. And the June bottom was the top of COVID. Okay, so we're not too far from here. So I just can't imagine why somebody that wants to go long and be bullish really wants to buy into their favorite companies until at least we get to this June bottom and double bottom. I mean, it just, why, why buy so it can go down? Most people that are going to go long and want to buy, you know, apples and all, all these wonderful companies that are out there, they're going to wait to at least create a bounce here at this line, okay, which is 29,707 on the Dow, all right, uh, let's just take a look at where we're at currently down from the peak, we're currently down 18.46 on the Dow, so yeah, I would just expect the bears to be running point right now, and I expect there to be a fight down here, where the bulls probably have a lot of orders um, set and are looking for that double bottom to get those nice prices. Now, if we break down through there, we could go to here. We can go to here. I suppose we can go to here. We can go to here. We can go to here. Here, here, and here. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we start going into, we start going that deep. We're uh, it was the middle of this purple circle. That's thirty-eight percent. It's possible. It just depends. Like here, here's here's how it's gonna get better. Okay, if we can get two inflation reads to tick down, just even just a little bit on core and headline, then bullish forward-looking buyers are going to you know, see some light at the end of the tunnel and they're going to want to be forward looking like the Dow theory and like the markets are and they're going to want to you know, put their money to work um, even if it's you know, a little shaky for a while, at least they know um, that CPI is ticking down. That'll be step one. Uh, if we get two reads in a row to tick down on core and headline, people are going to feel that there's progress. and. Um, I think that that will be big. I also don't, I, I just can't imagine, unless people don't understand technicals, I can't imagine why the bulls would be trying to do anything until they get down here to this double bottom myself, uh, which again is the top of COVID. So it's the top of the last bull run before COVID fell. See how it goes all the way across and we hit it 
where that double bottom is. We're not far from it. So that's probably where there's going to be a fight. Okay, whenever that day hits, which can be very, very soon. Uh, if we had one huge, nasty day on the Dow, we're going to be there. But realistically, three moderately bad days, three to four moderately bad days will get us there as well. Okay, we are heading in that direction. Um, all right, um, and basically what you see on the Dow is kind of what you're going to be seeing, you know, on the, the SPY and whatnot. Again, rally, down, pivot, breakthrough. The SPY is doing a little better. Um, it still hasn't touched this one where the Dow's already broken through that one. And then here's our June bottom over here. So same thing with the SPY. The Russell might look a little different. No, the Russell's kind of looking the same. Uh, it's in a descending. Uh, you know, everything that I'm seeing like at the end of this descending pattern, if you didn't break this low would actually be February of, you know, 2023. If you, you know, if you, uh, went to this next one, you're looking at like March. And if you went to this next one, you're looking at April 23. And the Dow can go as far as August of 2023 is what I'm seeing technically. Um, and that just depends on, it changes each time we break a support, we have new information. So yeah, um, we're in a primary downtrend. Okay, this is a primary downtrend. So you're gonna have rallies to the upside and rallies to the downside. You're just gonna have more to the down. So you wanna play those leverage bears I should show you the list. You guys would probably be up like 30% if you guys were buying it. I know a lot of my guys in the group are buying the stuff that I'm telling them because, you know, they're all excited, you know. And, and you know, there's, you guys are starting to learn how to trade and, like, read the markets and understand. And I, I'm very proud and grateful of everybody in the group. They're doing a great job. Um, sorry, that was the NASDAQ. This is the Russell. Same thing. You know, you're, you're just... You're, you're at a level of support, you break that, you come in the next one, break that, you're at that June low. So looks like the Dow is actually falling the hardest, which is the big caps. Yeah, that's why like, check this out. That's why like your big ones like Microsoft and Facebook and what else, like Google and um, I actually just bought more Apple today myself. Where does it say, uh, there it is. Um, check this out. So this, I just saw this today. So Microsoft, okay. Microsoft today was at a very, very old from years ago, double bottom, pivot low, all the way across the board, another test here before the rally and another test. Let's see if it's holding or breaking down. It's bouncing off the line. Prime time. Last time I said prime time on Apple, you would have you would have made nine hundred dollars per share. I'm telling you, Microsoft, prime time. Look at that. So everything is technical. You know, the Fed comes out and crushes the breakout. Technically, these things fall to these supports. Technically, um, you know, it's a good time to get Microsoft. I mean, it just shows in the charts. It just is. And that's why when you back it down, you start seeing that a lot of the other people knew that. And it grinded and boom, this went blue. And it's taking off right on that level from years ago. So um, I will say that out there feels like convictionless right now. It doesn't feel like there is a tremendous amount of conviction. A lot of things are kind of... Um, range bound and not a lot of volume and stuff like that. Crypto uh, did do decent today. Um, you know, the, the Chili's alert that I made, that thing is uh, working on a breakout right here from its previous local high. And you have a cup and handle pattern, which is quite positive. Um, you can see it's right at the line, so that breakout is probably gonna happen um, between the time I make this video possibly even the time you see this video or just several hours after, or it could get rejected. Algorand, I've been talking about it in a lot of videos, talking about it constantly in the in the group and making a lot of alerts, and Algorand is on a straight tear. I was explaining how this was a bottoming process, and now look at it jumping. Look at it jumping. I'm up a lot on Algorand right now. Um, look at that, guys. It's flying, you know? Uh, here's a leverage bear betting that the um, 
semiconductor industry will go down. This is the daily. Look, it's it's uh, it's about to cross over the 200 with the blue ribbon. That that means bull run. And <laughs> if this isn't a bull run, that means we're in a legit bear run. Um, look look at this action. This is really nice. So that's you bet that semiconductors are going to come down. You buy SOXS. It went up 8.57%, Algorand 11.75% today, and Chili's 15.92%. Adam, I've been saying it. Now, I know it retraced a little. It got over and it kind of retraced. But look, it's trying to push back. It's trying to push back. It went up. It came down. And it's trying to make another push. So got to keep an eye on it very closely because it is at the 200, okay? TZA, it's a bet that um, the Russell will come down. It's definitely showing uh, momentum, higher lows, higher highs, and uh, yeah. Matic now, Matic is uh, showing, you know, like it rejected on the 200 and is breaking supports, but if you back it down to the one hour, it's trying to make an effort to get back up. And this is what I'm talking about, about this conviction range bound type of stuff. I'm seeing it on a lot of charts. Ave just a week and a half ago was at $91 and you know a little sideways for a day and a half it looks like but um, and showing weakness like I had said in that other chart. If this double bottoms this could go all the way back down to 45. So Avalanche is one I've noticed. Uh, it's got that bottoming process and I think that Avalanche would be a good buy right now uh, if you don't have it because it's just now on the hourly starting to show strength at its 100. And as you can see, you just got your first blue doji, and you've already established, um, you've already established a bottoming process and your first higher low, okay? Which is at exactly right now, resting on that support. So let's just fix this real quick. So if I back that up, so you can see it a little more closely. This is, is that other support and it's breaking out of it and about to go above the 200. Technically, Avalanche looks really good for a technical entry, plus it's a good crypto. It's a good one. Um, Sushi Swap, I tried to tell you guys to, to buy this uh, four cents ago. Um, it was a dollar two. And uh, it's, it's also got its bottoming process and it's down 1500% right now. Okay, so, I mean, it's down a lot, and it's going through its bottoming process. So, you know, these are these are good prices. You don't have to go all in. You don't even have to buy it. I'm just I'm just showing you. These are these are ones that I I've bought, and the reason why I bought them. Chainlink. I'm a big bull on Chainlink. I love it. It has shown up some weakness for a few days, but um, look, 5.48 today, and um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 there's a lot of, there's not a lot of conviction is the problem, but it is green and that's positive. Um, Ethereum was down in what the 1200s, um, came all the way down to 12, about 1224 it looks like, and it's about 1309, so almost, almost 90, 85, 90 bucks higher than it was yesterday. Um, I don't think that Ethereum turns the corner until we get to at least October 26th. Okay, that's what I'm seeing on Ethereum. I think there's going to be, um, you know, it's going to bounce up and down more to the down and then it's going to change directions around there. Worst case scenario, uh, the Fed does not let it go up and it takes till right before Christmas, December 20th. So these are good times to be, you know, accumulating. Um, but just do it technically like, you know, just, just wait, wait for this this red line to go blue. Uh, wait for you know it to maybe get close to like this bottom and snap it up. Just, just try to be technical about it so you can buy more of it for less money. Uh, Mana is having a good day again. Bottoming process. Um, <clears throat> Bitcoin, Bitcoin was down. I've also seen a lot in the um, Cardano chart. The Cardano's had some really um, good and interesting movements lately, so I like that. This level right here is that basically the like just below nineteen thousand, and it has been just like magnetized to this thing. It can't get off this line. This line is sticky. This is gonna be this line of this nineteen thousand, and you know why? It's um I saw many other YouTubers and people on Twitter um, showing the bottom curve. Um, 
you know, of the tops and the bottoms and the 19 and, and what they're saying actually makes a lot of sense why this line is so damn sticky. Because if you were to back up the chart, like maybe I should do it on the weekly actually, might be easier. So, so we're like right here and well, maybe I can do it on the daily. Let's see here. What they're showing is that it was a previous peak on Bitcoin from years ago. And to me, that does make sense that it would hold that support and this would be a super sticky line. Yeah, see, right here, this is what they're talking about. This previous area right here is where we're stuck. So yeah, the bulls and bears are really fighting it out there. Here's a little idea, bears. Why don't you just let us, let it go up? Why don't you just stop selling for like a few days and let us like get some, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we're going to whoop your ass anyway. So let's just like, let's just get it out of the way right now. Food for thought. Um, let's see. Yeah. If you watch those videos, the five to nine crosses, or I was talking about this simple strategy always makes me money. Number one Bitcoin strategy. The numbers don't lie. All those videos from about a week ago show um, the five to nine cross strategy. And then I use um, eight confirmations on this chart as well. And that's why I have that high win rate and my equity curve keeps going up. It's, it's, I'm in the zone with it. Like it's, it's pretty smooth. Like it's, it's not hard. Uh, even in the hardest market ever, it's not that hard because of the rules, the strategy, the guidelines, the technicals, the the confirmations, the coding, the settings, everything that we have for you um, that, that I teach you guys, you know, it, it makes it so that, you know, you can really see the buy signals to enter, really see the sell signals to exit. And um, yeah, it does really well for you. So Let's see if there's anything else I want to talk about. I, I do think that I should bring up DRV again. Okay, so look at it. I mean, I, I'm literally like shaking you like this is a bet real estate's going to come down. I tried to prep you before the, the permits and the housing starts month over month came out. They did. It went up. Then Jerome Powell came out. And before he did that, I made another video saying, please, please look at DRV. It's triple leverage. And he comes out and says real estate needs to come down. This thing is running. Okay. I'm in it and a lot of my really pretty longs, like, the, you know, I got a lot of really nice ones. I got a really good companies, guys. A lot of them are red, but all of my leverage bears are green. Um, and some of my cryptos and some of my stocks too. But, um, but yeah, like DRV, TZA, SQQQ, SDAO. SPXS, SOXS, DRIP, um, just to name a few. Those ones are all just bang, and they're all triple leverage bears, and I'm just, like, cleaning up on that stuff. So, you know, I use it for hedging. I, I, I'm, that's also why in the prop trading, um, you know, I do a lot of hedging. I do a lot of hedging because... When I spot sideways action and I don't know which way it's going to go, I just put like, you know, five Bitcoin long, five Bitcoin short. And then I just put a buy stop and a, a, a regular stop. And whichever direction it goes, I take that loss on the chin and let it rally. Or sometimes because Bitcoin's so volatile and if you can get the hedge really close, sometimes it'll whip down. And you can just click sell, take your little profit on that. And then it'll bounce up because you can look at longer time frames knowing that the overall trend is going to go in your favor. Um, and then you'll actually hit money on both of them. So I do that a lot. And uh, yeah, so I don't know um, what else to really go over. Uh, I just think that, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same portfolio. I'm just going to, instead of compounding on the daily, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to work my way out of them. I'm going to sell in the profit or let it get stopped in the profit and just move, move them to the hourly. I'm going to keep the same companies though, which is all of these. And I have some more. And, um, uh, just to remind you what like the five to nine looks like. Um, I'll just, just show you so that you understand. So I have multiple computers. So over here I have it on, um, the seconds and I also do my screeners over there and over here where I'm on YouTube and you can see the screen, 
It's where I have my trading view and my prop trading. And over here is where I have like all my account information with all my actual stocks and cryptos and, and basically nothing else is really on this computer except, um, you know, my positions and, and of course I have like wa like watch lists and screeners over here too. But this is what I mean by five to nine. So the five is the green, this nine is the purple, and this is the daily, okay? And this is this is a watch list that I work off of, okay? It's called Jedi Compound. Chili's is at the top of the list. If the price action goes through both and the green crosses through the purple, it's bullish, okay? It's very bullish. And I just stay in until either these two cross, okay, that's one way you can do it, or you can do the five to nine cross stop five, so you place your stop on the five every time, okay? Uh, or you can do the five to nine cross stop nine, every day you move your stop there where, where this purple one is, or you just do the five to nine cross, and then when it crosses back down, you do it again. And if you did this on Chili's last time, you would have bought right here, okay? I have a whole video on this for you, and I teach you this and um, everything else. So let's see, you stayed in. It didn't cross until, I guess it legitimately did cross right there. So we gotta count it. So <clears throat> that was um, at 21 cents. Okay, you sold and you bought over here at 10 cents. <laughs> okay. He made 11 cents. He made over 100% profit. Chili's is cheap. So you put 10 grand on Chili's, you, you made 11 grand profit and got your 10 grand back just trading the crosses on the daily. I mean, who loves you, baby? Come on. I'm trying to make it, you know, I know my brain thinks and like very com complicated with all these technicals, but I spent a lot of time dumbing it down and just getting it to a place where I can explain it so people can understand it and that's why I have it on the line chart really easy to see I've got it just down to a couple indicators that I know have a proven proven you know high win rate and very easy strategy if you want to try to trade because um, I know sometimes I talk about all kinds of crazy stuff and trader talk that um, if you're new to like markets might be a little confusing so yeah that's that's what I mean by the five to nine uh, look at look at Algorand guys. I mean, I would this is why I was making alerts down here I was literally and that's the exact penny. I was making the alerts and Because I'm watching all this stuff So you guys should just get in my discord the 99 bucks a month will make you so much money You want you won't even think about it. You won't even think about it But it's for my time and my work and I work hard uh, For you guys. So yeah, I mean this thing is up seven cents and you know, so I'm up a lot actually on Algorand. It's 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 one of my top positions as far as gains currently. Um, look at that <laughs> cross, and it's just going like crazy. And this is a this is a breakout, guys. It's breaking out right now. Adam, I've been telling you for weeks to get it. We got it uh, over here. We ran that whole thing. Of course, it did come down, but look, it's fighting back through the five, and it is it is trying. Um, sushi's also, you know, went up, came down. This is all the Fed and the CPI stuff just brings it down. And of course, Bitcoin, which is like the index of crypto, when that comes down, it all comes down. So in order to be bullish to the daily, you want to be, you know, like this. You want the five and the nine to cross and price action to be above it. And uh, what I'm doing is because it's still volatile, I'm just basically doing all the same watch list but I'm just going to be doing my five to nine crosses on the hourly instead. So I will have bought here and I'm still in. And this is, so I paid a, I paid two pennies more. Um, but where you make your money on the hourly is you actually get out. It'll cross on the hourly. Could be two, three days before it gets to the daily. So that's where the money is made. Um, you, so, yeah, I paid, let's say, you know, I did this, I paid two cents more on Algorand, but I might save myself five, six cents on the exit uh, because I'm trading hourly. So that's that's my plan. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just taking the same watch list, all my high conviction ones. Of, oh, we're getting a Bitcoin pump right now. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What's going on? Hold on. Hold on. What's going on? 
What is going on, Bitcoin? Okay, all right. All right, so we're getting a little pump, a little pump sauce. But I knew that was coming because we got bullish to the hourly a little bit earlier today. See how see how we got this right here? Um, we got like this green dot. The price action went over the zero point. We got our blue volume. We started trending up. We got a blue HMA. We came above that sticky 19. We made higher lows, higher highs. We're coming up to the, the 200. We get above the 200. We're good. The vortex is in our favor. Earlier, when these all crossed, this stochastic cross low and our dynamic trend indicator crossed and went green as well. So we got all the confirmations and the five to nine on top. Who loves you, baby? So look, I appreciate you watching to the end. Jump in that Discord, come and kick it, and uh, we'll see you the next time. Welcome to the wheelhouse.